Hello everybody, it's only Judith. Right, I'm bringing you your first first step in your lessons with me. And we're going to start with this lovely blue tit. Now I, I will have sent you your line drawing template. You'll be able to hear the rain in the background in my delightful shedio. I might just adjust my daylight drawing lamp. Okay, so you can just about see the line drawing on my watercolour paper. Now the watercolour paper I would like you to use, please, is a cold press watercolour paper. Make sure that it's either on a block or if you've stretched it, because you're going to be doing a wash on the background. So what you don't want to do is it to become cockled or buckled because you never know, you might actually be really, really pleased with what you do and want to use it. Okay, so you're going to make up some washes of paint, some colours. I will have taken a photograph of the colours that you want to make up and I will have sent them to you. These are the colours I will have asked you to make. So you will have made up Permanent Rose, Rose Madder, Cadmium Yellow with Sap Green. Okay, so you've got a yellow, a green. Then I've mixed up Cadmium Yellow and Hooker's Green. In this Cadmium Yellow with Hooker's Green, I want you to make up another mix of it and put in a touch of Yellow Okra and more Sienna. So you're going to get a slightly browner mix. You will do some shadowing in it where I can show you with an arrow with raw sienna and raw umber. I want you to make up a darker green here with hooker's green and in that you've got sap green and raw umber. Okay, so I want you in a palette, I can't really move the palette over because it will just be a disaster. Okay, always have your two different pots of water separate. So you'll have a, a pot of water to clean your brush in and you'll have a pot of water to use for mixing. I'm going to do this background. We're not going to use any masking fluid, we don't need to. You're going to do this background of pink and then we're going to do the background of green. To give ourselves maximum time to manipulate it, we're going to wet the whole paper with water. Now bear with me while I'm peering around a camera setup, so you may get my head in the way at some point. I'll try not to. And you'll remember why. Why do we do water on the background first? Well, it gives us longer to manipulate the paint. It's going to give us a really nice smooth background so we don't get it streaky. So you're going to paint around the details of the flowers that you'll have drawn in. using your clean water. I'm using a number 12 rosemary sable brush. Don't normally use sable brushes. Don't normally like them. But this one growing on me. I've bought it off a friend who was giving up and it's growing on me. Not my favourite by any stretch of the imagination. But it, yeah, it's, it's, it's not bad. It's 
not bad. I decided I was going to give it a go because I found out that Rosemary make Billy Showers brushes. So I've never been a fan of them before, but I do like Billy Showers brushes. So when I discovered that Rosemary and Co make Billy Showers brushes, I decided I'd give them another go. Okay, so putting your water in right up to the edges of the flowers. If you get a pool of water, which I've got here, I want you to move your pool of water all the way out. Push your water out so it doesn't collect. Use that water and spread it out. I keep having to move things around. I'm in a very tight space in my little shed here with my camera. And it's quite cold in here, which is handy. So it doesn't dry as quick. So you may want to do that. You know, if it's a sunny day, wait until it's a bit cooler. Because otherwise, if it's a really hot day, your watercolour is going to dry really, really quickly. So look for any bits that you've missed. Use your overhead lights. If you haven't got an overhead light, you can always go and get your daylight lamp if you've got one. Or even a torch. And just look for any areas you've missed. Okay, so I know I've not gone round his little leg here. And I haven't gone around this bit. Keep an eye on your reference picture. Okay, now, if you can't remember where you worked, It's not going to hurt you to go over it. It will hurt you more not to do it. Okay, so paint all the way around the leaves with your water. And if it pulls where the paper's starting to cockle, just with the belly of the brush, just pull it out. It will just help keep it nice and even. Because you've got to remember, I'm painting this flat. Now normally, I'd be at a nice angle. But for this demonstration, I'm painting it flat for the camera. So you at home, if you can put it at an angle, by just putting your brush roll underneath, or if you've got a drawing board, just raise it up slightly for yourself. You'll get a better end result than if you're painting it flat like me. But for the purposes of the camera, I have to paint it flat for you. Okay, so take your water right to the edge. Okay, so by the time you get round to the edge, on the outside. You'll be able to see that it's drying up here at the top. It's soaking into the cotton of the paper.
the shine's gone off it, which is exactly what the point you want. Then look for any bits in between. Okay, now you can still see it's shiny here, but it's fine there. Okay, now we paint, mixed up some Permanent Rose and Rose Madder. Now, Rose Madder is the darker of the two pinks. Okay, so we're going to use Rose Madder for the shadowed marble areas and Permanent Rose for the lighter areas. And two very, very vibrant pinks. So wet your brush. I want you to pick up some permanent rose. I want you to start moving it about. Okay, so in some random shapes. I don't, what I don't want is a flat wash going from left to right. I want you to paint the impression of blossoms. So you're not scrubbing at it. Okay, so dip your water in the br brush in the water. Then let it go for a walk, let it wander with the paint. So you're going to create the impression of blossom. I don't want you to overwork it. Pick up some paint. Okay, so you've got holding your brush at a 45 degree angle to your paper. Pick up some paint. Okay, now your pink blossom goes a little bit further along. You can hear the wind getting up. Let it goes along here behind the little bird's head. Okay, now dip your brush in the water, take the excess off, and we're just going to soften up this edge because it's going to join up with the green. see any bits of white peeking through, just dab it over. Take the pink blossom just behind the bird's head, over the top. Now your paper should still be nice and damp. When you're not overworking it, dip your brush in the water and pick up some more of the permanent rose. If it stops moving around, pick up some water. And 
and just move it with a bit of water. Just soften those edges. Remember it's blossom. You don't want to be slapping the water on. If you slap the water on, you're going to get cauliflowers. We don't want that. around a little beak. Again it's starting to dry a little bit so wet your paper. Again not with too much water, just soften those edges and pick up some of the paint. Remember that watercolour is going to dry two shades lighter. Okay, so it's probably a bit pinker than I would have probably liked there. I'm not going to worry about it. It's still pretty. And it is going to dry lighter. But it is probably a lot pinker than I would have wanted it. So I might reduce the pinkness just a little bit coming down. So that join here just needs softening up. So with your belly of the brush, just soften the edge. It's a nice brush this. I'm actually very impressed with it. Which I'm pleased with, because quite often I've bought brushes and been very disappointed and I could have bought a pair of shoes. Okay, so that's too bright. 
to soften this. Sorry. Now, around this side, it's more of a, of a reddy colour than pink. So I'm going to put some more water down and pick up some of the rose madder this time. Only a little bit. It's not as lurid bright pink. Same thing, keep it walking, keep it moving round. Just where it transitions into a redder pink. some water up and just soften those edges. Before it disappears into the green. And then it appears here as well. There's a bit right. Pink goes behind his little leg. So let's put this in. Now if it comes in one bit, it's got to, this bit's act as a bridge, it's got to appear here. But then this rose madder has to start appearing. Becomes more red. Okay, so this time you're, point, you're painting the, the very point of your brush. So even if you've got a big fat chunky brush, you can still use a really pointy end. Take the rose madder all the way out to the edge. It appears behind this bit of blossom here. If 
wet your brush and just soften those edges. So we're going to put some of the green in. Look for any bits you've missed. Can't see that any that I've missed. And if they have, if we have, I'm not really concerned. Now we're going to look at putting the brighter of the cadmium yellow and sap green in. In this background here. Now this green will have dried. So what I'm going to do is, I am going to re-establish, I'm transferring a bit of pink here, so I'm just going to clean my brush off. I am going to re-wet this area, because although it's cold in here, Paper's drying. It's not going to hurt it to be re wet. Okay, so let's first pick up some of the cadmium yellow and suck green. Now I've mixed this quite a while ago, so give it a mix in your palette because it would have split and separated. Take it right to that edge. And bring it down. And then we're going to take some of this mix here, which is the plus where we've done cadmium yellow and hookers green, and then we added in the touch of yellow ochre and raw sienna. But instead of having it such a jump, we're going to go to here cadmium yellow and hookers green first. Don't forget to give it a mix. Don't want it to be too much of a jump. Okay, go right up to the bird, back of the bird. You'll see I'm not dipping in to the water. If I keep dipping into water at this point, that's when we're going to get cauliflowers. Because I'm changing the dilution of the mix, and that's where we're going to run into problems. And uh, that's what I don't want to do. Okay, so then we're going to take the same cadmium yellow and hook as green. 
I'm going to drop it into here, in this corner. Pass the green. I'm going to take it for a walk. Now we are going to get a hard edge here. And we're going to have to deal with it. And we're going to have to soften it. Okay, so clean your brush off, dry it off. I'm just going to brush over it. Have a tissue in your hand. Just with the very tip of your brush. Where it overlaps onto the pink. I'm going to soften it. Okay, and then we're going to darken up here. So where we have the touch of yellow ochre and burnt sienna, I want you to pick this up. This is where we're going to soften, drop it in. Where we had that join, that's so where I want you to soften it in, just here. Soften it with the belly of your brush. Do the same. You want to increase the depth, just in some places. Just drop it in. And pick up some more. Go on the edge of your palette. Right, remember, don't overwork it. in this corner and you can always go back a step and add the green in again pick some water up Just soften it. I'll just add in different shades of green. Again, use the body of the brush just to walk your greens around.
should be nice and dry up here now. Okay, so if you want to darken anywhere up, such as here where it's overlaps with the pink, it's quite a lot darker on this join on the photograph. Yeah, just drop it in now. It'll soften up as it dries. On the very edge up. And as that dries, that will dry nice and soft. Okay, now we've got some green going on here. And again, that's the same greens. So we're going to start with, it'll be dry here, so let's put this water back in. Don't forget it's going to dry a lot paler. I think people always get disappointed because they always think it's going to dry the same colour as they paint. I'm a prime example of that. I paint a colour, I think, gosh, I love that colour. I think it's going to dry that colour. And then when it doesn't dry that colour, I get disappointed. So you should paint two shades darker. Okay, so let's get this paler colour, which was cadmium yellow and sap green. Now it's softer here on this side, it's a lot harder up there on the photograph, so this side's softer, but then it goes darker here. So let's take the cadmium yellow and hogs green. And keep it moving. And just softening the edges just with the side of your brush okay so if any really dark areas let's pick up the other mix that we made before which was where we added yellow ochre and burnt sienna drop it into the shadows. It's hard to know where to lean when you get to this point.
the other thing is when you use wet on wet it's actually going to dry lighter than if you use wet on dry with something else to bear in mind can you see it gives us the side of your brush just to take any pattern it out just soften it just soften any edges down here and we've got one last area over here which is when I look at the picture it's from the Okay, so again, let's just wet this because it's dried. Now the difference is here. This is actually really dark. So we mixed up a really dark one, which is hooker's green, sap green and raw umber. Give it a mix on your palette. In. Take it behind the blossom. We want it to appear all the way up here. And you can drop it in a little bit down here. So I'd like a little bit of it to appear. Just dab it on. Just a bit of depth. And we've got a little bit of a, I've got a bit of a hard join here. So I'm going to do the same here just to cover this hard join up. Dry your brush off. And then just pull the edges out. Won't always be hugely successful. Just sometimes it's just enough to distract from it. And then we need to increase the shadowing in this bit here. Is it bridges from here to here? Dry your brush off. And we're just going to soften it. Okay, now we have got some areas where the white's showing through. Although I said I didn't want white showing through, I'm actually going to leave it. No, I think it's quite effective. Okay, so there's your background with your pink blossom wash. So it's all softened really, really nicely. 
The only bit I'm not happy with is I'm not happy with this join here. I'm happier with this one. I'm not happy with that one. But I'm going to leave it because the more I mess with it, the worse it's going to get. Um, it's due to probably two different mixes and manipulating it too much. I would have probably been better to do that as we worked and um, mix the pink and the green at the same time. If I try and do too much with it now, it would just make a mess. So I'm better off leaving it to completely dry and trying to soften it later. Okay then, I'll see you for stage two.